All right, I want you to put a bookmarker in Proverbs 31. We're going to be coming back to it and turn, if you would, to Titus chapter 2. Last week when I was giving the announcements, I was talking about, you know, I took off of work after my wife had her surgery. And I kind of started rambling during the announcements just about a lot of things that were going on there at home. So I decided to just make a whole sermon out of the, the lessons that I've learned from that experience. And I call the title of my sermon is Lessons Learned Keeping the Home. So while my wife was, you know, after she had surgery, she, she wasn't allowed to, to do anything really. I mean, she had to be, she was in bed for a few days and then had, you know, like she's able to get up, but she can't lift anything. She can't really do any of the work and things like that. Um, and she's still able to help with, in some areas anyways, but really the burden of the home had fallen upon me and I knew that was gonna happen, which is why I prepared. I took time off of work so that I can make sure that things were being run uh, at home as they ought to be. But these are always good reminders and I brought this up last week, but you know, every time my wife has a child, it's, it's a similar thing where she needs to recover from having a child so she can't get up and just do all the stuff that she would normally be doing. I take off of work in those cases as well and try to keep things under wraps. But this time it, it was a little bit different. You know, we have six children, so um, three of them are being homeschooled right now. And then we've got the other, well, four of them are being, sorry, excuse me, four of them are being homeschooled right now. And two of them are not. So you've got a little baby, we've got all kinds of things going on. So there's, there's a lot of activity going on in the house. And tonight's sermon is going to be, you know, there, there's, there's a few points I want to make. Obviously, there's tons of stuff in Proverbs 31. We're going to be going back to that soon. Lots and lots and lots of great truths from there. Truths that I experienced, you know, at home firsthand but things that I hopefully, you know, I want to, I want to be able to one, maybe help some ladies a little bit. And look, I, I only did, was doing this for a week. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to be coming at you at the expert of all things that falls under the realm of, of what the ladies do. But there are some things that, you know, I, I do know that, that I could, you know, maybe they already have this down. You already have this down. Great. But hopefully it'll be helpful for some ladies. And also for men as well, especially husbands, um, in, in your interaction with your wife and both of you understanding the great workload that goes along with keeping the home. I had you turn to Titus chapter 2, look at verse number 3. The Bible reads, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Verse three, or for, excuse me, verse five is what we're going to be focusing on. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. We believe here, I believe wholeheartedly, the Bible teaches us very clearly that men and women have different roles, different functions within the family that the man is supposed to be uh, the leader, the strong one, the one who goes out and provides and works by the sweat of his brow to provide for his family. And the wife is supposed to stay at home and be a home keeper, a homemaker, a keeper at home, as the Bible says right here, as their job to make sure that everything is running appropriately at home. And, you know, it's, it's pretty insulting for people to say, like, oh, what, you know, where does your wife work? And you're like, well, she, she works at home. She, she has a full-time job keeping the house because it truly is a full-time job. Yep. That's right. And when you're doing things, especially when you're following the, the biblical way of, of raising a family, and especially the ideal way, right? I, I get people are maybe in, in screwed up situations, but... I always try to preach to the ideals, to what should be the norm, what should be the standard, what is it that the Bible's teaching. You know, if you're not in the situation, maybe, you know, you become a widow or, or you know, divorce or something like that, and you're a single parent raising children, 
this, you know, there's going to be some things, hopefully you can still take from this, but that's not God's plan or intent is for people to get divorced and have to be single parents raising children. Obviously, widows is a different story, and there is some work for that, but I'm not going to get into all that. We're going to be focusing just on a normal family that has a mother and a father and children and um, just kind of focus on that. But women here are instructed, and in Titus 2, you can see the aged men, the aged women, the young men, the young women, all are getting different instructions given to them as to you know what they should be doing. So here the women are told to be, you know, that they're, they're to be keepers at home, and that is part of their job. Well, as I mentioned, you know, I was a keeper at home for the past couple weeks and and running things completely in the household, and it is a lot of work. I'm the first to testify, it is a lot of work. And I I appreciate having these opportunities to do this because it gives me a better appreciation of my wife. It truly gives me a much better appreciation of her. Not that I didn't appreciate her before, but when you get used to doing your work, and as a man, you're, you're, you're in charge of everything. The husband is, is, is the boss of the whole family. So there's things that if you want it done, you know, every, the responsibility all falls on your shoulders. But... You have to understand, and, it, and this is the hard part, is when you're not micromanaging, right? Because I don't, I don't think micromanaging is a good way to manage. But when, you know, you can make sure that certain things are being done within your house, you got to make sure your, your kids are being taught and raised properly by your wife. And if there's any lacking there, you're responsible, Dad, to, to make sure those things are being done. And the way that you want your house run, just understand, though, especially with the bigger families, the more kids you have, there's a lot of work there's a lot of work that is being done, and sometimes you may not see it. These are things that once I start experiencing them, you know, when I come home from work, if I see something that's messed up or, so, you know, things out of order, it's easier to get like, well, what's up with this, huh? How, wh why is this like that? Why isn't this clear? What's this mess about, right? And, and to come home and, and kind of have these expectations when you weren't there all day and you don't know the whole story of everything that goes on. So I really appreciated having that experience because it does add a lot more appreciation. It's gonna help me to have a proper expectation. Now, I still do believe in, in trying to hold high standards and, and not just give up or say things are too hard and just kind of say whatever. I do think we should have high standards, but when it comes to, as a man, how you can work with your wife and communicate and make sure that things are going to be done right, you can still hold the high standards, but in the way that you, turn if you would to 1 Peter chapter 3, we're going to see this, you know, biblically from Scripture. Because while the husband is in charge and is the boss, you don't need to be a jerk. <laughs> That's the easiest way of saying it. Okay. Now, what the husband says goes. I mean, he has been given the authority by God to rule the household. And when you're looking at the qualifications for a bishop, for example, it says one that rules his own house well. So they're, they're put in a position, you know, a man that's going to be qualified to teach or to preach or be the, be the bishop of a church is someone that has to have their house in order and rules their house well. And part of ruling your house well, see, even though it is a dictatorship as far as the authority structure goes in the Bible for, for, the, you know, for the husband having that level of authority, it's not, it's not one, you know, I mean, you're, you're married, your spouse you should love each other <laughs> it's one where you should be leading and guiding and helping yes you can have you know things done say just make sure you're on the same page this is what we, we want to have done but have that communication open as well let's look at first peter chapter three we're going to start jump down to verse number seven because you know in the preceding verses it talks to the to the wives and says how they should be in subjection to their husbands and things like that and i've covered many sermons in the past about that i'm not going to go into depth in depth on that uh, this evening. Look at verse seven, the Bible says, likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, 
and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So when it comes to, because right before this, it talks about the, the wife's subjection to the husband and meekness and things like that, that, that she ought to have. Well, husbands, I think this is why this is followed up in verse seven, saying, hey, give honor unto the wife. Right? You, you, you're you're, you're going to, one, work for her. She's the weaker vessel. You're going to go out. You're going to provide her needs and her food and everything like that. You're going to give her that honor. And you're going to, you know, the, I believe a wife has a very important job and ought to be respected for that as well. Even though you're in charge, you still respect your wife and the work that she's doing and understand she is a weaker vessel. But not just that, it continues on and says, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Just because you're in charge, you're still heirs together. You're joint heirs with Christ. You know, assuming you're both saved, you're, you're also, you're not just husband and wife, you're also brother and sister. So you're on the same level as far as your relationship with God. In this life, a husband has authority over the wife, but don't forget that you are joint heirs together and that you're one flesh and that there should be one team and it shouldn't be a me versus you type of an attitude at home. God forbid it should be a, a us. It's a one. You know, I, I teach our children, you know, whenever there's and, and this usually happens for for petty things or little things like I've heard him say recently, oh, I'm on dad's side. I was, I was like, no, 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 there is no dad's side and mom's side. Okay, there's one side. We're on the same side. We're on the same team, right? This is, this is a family here, and we need to be able to work together because that, that is important. And we, you know, men, you're in charge. Remember that. We're on the same team. Lead, make sure you're doing things right, but, but remember that you give honor unto the wife and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Look at verse number eight. Finally, be all of one mind. So this is going to apply to the husbands, the wives, everyone having compassion one of another right be compassionate it, it can be easy to kind of get into a habit of ruling with a rod of iron at home right i don't think you need to go there i mean sometimes i'm not going to say it's never necessary you know if there's if there's uh, uh power struggles or something especially um you know within a home that there, there's, you know, the man needs to set the authority up. And sometimes it, it, there just needs to be the foot's going down and this is the way things are because that's what's right and you're going to try to run a biblical household. That happens, okay? But in general, we should be remembering, you know, to have compassion on one of another and, 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 and understand you've got a hard job too. You know, the man probably has a hard job. Right? You go off, you work, you work for many hours, you, you're doing a lot of stuff, but don't forget that your wife has a hard job too. Okay? And, and don't forget to be compassionate towards your wife, having compassion one another, love as brethren, look at this, be pitiful, be courteous. Right? Show respect for each other, be courteous of each other, be thoughtful of each other, and, you know, when there's problems or issues that need to be settled in your house, you can still deal with an issue courteously and respectfully and appropriately within the house. And like I said, it's, it's when you can think of, well, hey, what are the reasons why such and such might not have gotten done as opposed to just this isn't done, right? That's a, look, this is something I learned. That's what I, it's, it's something to remember that there could be other reasons behind it. It's don't, don't automatically assume. Now, if, if their wife's just playing on Facebook and just screwing around and doing nothing and something getting done, okay, well, that, you know, <laughs> you might need, you might need to, to have a little bit more stern communication just because, you know, like, what are you doing, right? But it'd be the same way if you were screwing around at work, right? Like, come on, what are you doing? Get your job done. But don't assume that that's going on. You know, you know, talk about it and, and see what really is happening. And verse 9 says, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing. And this is just good advice in a marriage anyways. And dealing with anybody else. 
I mean, this is just, this is just, just great truth all the way around, not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that you are there unto called, that you should inherit a blessing. Um, I'm obviously applying this more just towards in the home. Turn if you into Colossians chapter three. So that was the first thing is men, your, your wife has a hard job. And as we get into Proverbs 31, we're going to see all the things that a virtuous woman is, does at home. Okay, and, and women, you know, if you're, if you're not... If you're going, well, I don't do any of that. Well, maybe you should take it to heart and see what you can do to, to line up a little bit more closely with the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31. And, and men, you know, until proven otherwise, assume that your wife is working hard and, and doing these things because why would you think uh, otherwise of your own wife anyways? Colossians chapter 3 you know, we're going to read this passage here, and this is going to go a little bit more into kind of the day-to-day the -day work and activity at home. And a lot of what I'm going to be preaching on this evening is to be focused not just on the work, but also with the children. And so this is mostly going to be for families with children. Hopefully everyone can just listen and learn from this, even if you don't have children or if you're single or anything like that. But... Um, Again, these principles apply across the board. Colossians 3.22, the Bible reads, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ. And this kind of dovetails with what I was preaching this morning when we saw, you know, if you, if you can't, basically if you can't handle the things that are the least, you know, the smallest jobs, then who's going to entrust to you the greater jobs? And when you're keeping the house, there's a lot of small jobs to do. There's a lot of little things that may not seem like it's that big of a deal. Okay, just doing some dusting or some cleaning or some organizing, you know, all these things that just kind of need to be done in the maintenance of your home may seem individually to be little things. But I'll tell you what, we ought to be doing these things with the regard and with the respect, like you're working for Christ. I think we should do that. You know, ladies, take some pride in your work and in your job and do the best job that you can. Anything that's worth doing at all is worth doing right. Do it right the first time around. Make sure, you know, don't cut the corners. Don't, you know, if it means you're not getting as many things done in a day, it may, that may even be better just to make sure that what you're doing is done right and appropriately. Now, I'm not talking about going way overboard, OCD, like, you know, toothbrush on the wall or something, but... You know what I mean, right? Because there's a difference between just going, okay, well, we didn't even sweep or, mop or sweep or vacuum or anything, but we're just going to start mopping and they start making like a bigger mess and say, well, I mopped and that's done. Um, but we should, you know, take the job, seriously, all the jobs that you do, and especially ladies, you know, we have children at home, they're going to learn from what you do. Your work ethic the way that you clean, the way that you cook, the way that you just do everything, you prepare things, they learn every single day from watching you. They learn more from watching you than they will from what you tell them. They learn more from watching you than they will from what you tell them. Remember that every day, fathers and mothers, you are their example. If you want your children to grow up and excel you and be better than you, that's what I want. I want my children to be better than me. Well, I can't expect that if I can't at least make them as, you know, be, be as, as, as good as I can before them and show them the right way so that they can excel. And, and you know, we need to be able to um, do the work at home knowing that they're going to be watching and, and you're training them and you don't want to train them in a, in a way that's just just half-hearted and well who cares because now you're going to be setting up your kids to be those people who if you can't even do that which is least then who's going to entrust to you greater riches and greater jobs and greater tasks 
Let's teach them how to do the small ones right from the beginning. And let's ourselves do the small ones right and well and thoroughly from the very beginning. And look, it's hard. There's a lot to be done. And there's, it's a temptation to not do the jobs very well, but stay with it because what happens, and this is where, you know, I, like I said, I only done it for like a week and a half or whatever. I know that I would get better. For me, though, everything took way longer to do because I'm out of my element, right? I haven't had to do these things since I was living alone, single, you know, over 12 years ago. So that was a long time since then. And it was only me. When you're only cleaning and picking up after yourself, it's easy. I was talking to Brother Logan about that last week. You know, it's pretty easy when it's just you. There's not that much to do. It's like, okay, I, I can handle this pretty good. But when you have to take care of all these, you know, you know, other people and everything else, and, you know, I had to take care of my wife as well, so I had to make sure that her needs were met as well as my children. And you just got to fall into rhythm. But the reason why I'm bringing that up is because if you start doing things right, you may get a little bit behind at first. But you'll, you'll get things down into a good routine. You don't want to start off with bad habits. And this applies across the board on, on so many levels, right? I remember I, I, I played various sports and stuff when I was younger. And when you're learning to do anything, it's really important that you learn to do things right from the beginning. I was teaching my daughter. She's taking piano lessons. And she wanted to just play however, and I was trying to teach, no, 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 you need to hold your fingers a certain way because if you start being sloppy from the beginning, it's going to be that much harder to break those bad habits later than it is to get them down right the first time. So even when it comes with the little jobs at home, try to make sure you're getting them done right. And if you've had bad habits for a long time, you know, work at changing those. Work at, at, at changing it so that you can do your work heartily as to the Lord, like Colossians 3, 23 is talking about, that you can take the, that, that effort in everything that you do, do it heartily. Let's go back to Proverbs 31. One of the things that stands out every time I read Proverbs 31 is just the amount of work that the virtuous woman does. The amount of work, the activity going on by this virtuous woman who has a husband, has a family, she has children, and just she's keeping herself very, very busy. And we're going to skip around a little bit because there's a few points that I want to make. But uh, let's start reading here in verse number 13. Bible reads, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Right? So she's will she she wants to work. She's working willingly and, and ready to do the work. Now, the other thing I just want to point out as we go through this, keep this in mind too, because we have more tools at our disposal now that should make things a little bit easier than they were back when this was written to get things done. So I know that the job, I know <laughs> that the job can feel overwhelming sometimes, right? I know that. But just remember and think on, you know, Proverbs 31 about all this stuff that's being described here as you know the example or the model of the virtuous woman say well you know what if god's giving us all of this you know there's a lot of things i don't really have to do anymore i don't have to make our own clothing we have resources to be able to get that you know and there's some that, that should save you some time to be able to invest in other areas and you know so just just kind of keep that in mind verse number 14 says she is like the merchant ship she bringeth her food from afar and what that's showing is the resourcefulness of the wife being able to save some money and, you know, by, by getting the stuff that's, that's, you know, you're, you're cutting out the middleman or whatever, you're getting the stuff from afar, you're, you're getting good deals on things, you're on the lookout for that, that helps overall in the family. 
Um, but one of the biggest points here, and I was talking about Brother Carter when he came over and dropped off the, uh, the offerings about this one. And this, I learned this real quick, is verse number 15. The Bible says, She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Now, the, the schedule that I've been used to is I sleep in almost as late as I can before I have to go to work. I don't, go, I don't live very far from my job. So I could just get up real quick, get ready, get out the door. Not a big deal. And then I could start working. Not the same at home. <laughs> Not the same at home. At home, if you want to make sure you can get your jobs done and your tasks done, especially with the children, you need to be getting up before everybody else. You have to get an early start to the day. It, that is the number one thing, I think, and it was the hardest thing for me, too, because I didn't accomplish that every day, and every single day I didn't get up early. Everything just got pushed off and just was like just way behind schedule for the whole day because you've got meals to, to, to prepare and cook and, and you're, you're trying to teach kids and then you end up teaching the kids through meal time and then there's more chaos because people aren't fed and they're starting to act up and well, we need to get you fed. We gotta take a break from school. You, know, you got everything going on. See, I was doing it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't, I didn't hire somebody, I did it. Real experience. It's work, it's work and I'll tell you what, my wife's better at it than I am. <laughs> I have no problems admitting that. And God, I think, made us that way. I'm better at going to work and working all day at the job that I do, whatever job that is, and, and her running the household. Because there's a lot of things that you got to keep straight at home. And getting all the meals ready and thinking about all what all the needs of all the kids are and everything like that. There's a lot going on. It is critical to get up early. And if you don't get up early, you need to change your schedule to get up before everyone. You need that time to prepare for the day before everyone else. And, you know, with us, it's you got to get homeschool stuff prepared, ready. You know what you're going to teach for the day. You've got their books ready. You've got the, you know, the lessons ready. You've got the meals ready. You know what you're going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's already planned out. Even if you don't have everything out or whatever yet, you know what the day is going to be and what your tasks are for the day and how you're going to accomplish it. You need that time every day before people start needing you know, help in the bathroom and diapers changed and food, you know, and all this other stuff, the craziness when the chaos ensues. You need the plan for the day. That is huge. But that's also hard. Being the first one up, it's not fun. <laughs> no one like really enjoy, well, maybe some people, I don't know. I've never enjoyed being the first one up. Some people I think are kind of crazy and they actually like getting up, you know, way early before dawn and stuff. Not me. But if you want to be like the virtuous woman, then this is, and this is really important. This, this is, could be a life changer for you if you don't already do this. Um, jump down to verse number 18. Because not only does a virtuous woman get up while it's yet before dawn. So it said when it's yet night. It's before dawn. Verse 18 says, She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. So she's even staying up later into the evening because there's so much work to be done. Because it is a hard job. Because there's so many things to do in a day. Not only is she getting up early in the morning, she's also staying up late into the evening. And, you know, again, husbands, it's not an easy job. So, so be aware of that and considerate and compassionate towards your wife when there's all these things to be done. And wives, you do have a lot of work on your plate. It's not, you know, being a stay-at-home wife and mom, there's a lot to that. There's a lot of work. Uh, jump back up to verse number 16. We're going to see the virtues of strength in women. Now, by and large, men are, you know, we already saw that women are the weaker vessel, and we know that men are, should be spiritually strong, physically strong, um, and stronger than the wife, but the wife has to have her own strength as well. I mean, if you're getting up early and staying up late and doing all this work in between, you got to be strong. 
Right? You have to have a strength to, to accomplish that. Verse 16, the Bible reads, She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. So not only is she going to be taking care of the children, taking care of the chores of the house, now she's also going and planting a vineyard to be able to provide more sustenance for the home, right? Uh, she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. And again, our society, we're not as agricultural, maybe, as a whole in general. People don't have as much property and things like this. So if you don't have a vineyard to be able to plant, there's a little bit more time. And here's someone, a virtuous woman, is doing some extra work that's being done in addition to everything else that she would do during the day is taking care of a vineyard. I mean, maybe you have a garden or something like that uh, that would also uh, kind of fall in the same type of category here. Verse number 25 says, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. So in those verses, you see that hey, she girdeth her loins with strength, she strengtheneth her arms. Strength and honor are her clothing. You need to have that strength because you're active, you're working. Verse number 19 we jump back up to verse number 19. The Bible reads, She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. I love this verse that's in here too, because even though there's so much work to be done, there's still time for the virtuous woman to minister to other people. Which would be, I believe also is, is you know, doing some work for the Lord. That there should always be able at some point during the week to be able to have time to do good, to minister, to reach forth our hands to the needy, to be able to, to, to do something to help other people. Because this would be outside of your family. This isn't talking about your poor and needy kids. This is talking about other people that she's stretching out her hand to and, and doing good. So with how busy a woman's job is at home, there's still time to serve the Lord. And, and if you feel like I don't have any time to serve God because I just have to, then there's something lacking. And then you need to readjust your schedule and, and figure out where is the time where you can do this because the virtuous woman is able to do it all. All right, and I don't think, yes, this is a, maybe a high standard, but God sets the standards for us, and he doesn't set standards ultimately that we can't keep. Now, I know that we're not perfect and sinless, but this is doable. It's just hard. It's a lot of work. But you need to have the will to do all of this, and I, think it, I definitely think it can be achieved. Let's keep reading here. Jump down to verse number 26, and this is contrary to, to what the world is going to say about the stay-at-home mom, especially the Christian stay-at-home, raising kids, right? They're going to they're gonna assume that that woman, oh, she's just ignorant and dumb and whatever else. Look, the virtuous woman is not stupid. Right. It's not dumb. Because she's smart. The Bible says in verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. It's a good woman. A virtuous woman is a good woman. She's smart. She has wisdom. She knows the word of God. And there's nothing that's, and I'm sick of that, that stereotype, you know, of, of women, Christian women to stay home. Look, I want, I want my girls to be smart. I want them to be well-educated. I want them to have a brain and be able to think because it's going to make their job easier and they're going to be able to do it better no matter what job that is. Even, even keeping the home, I mean, just the more intelligence and brightness you have, the better you're going to be at everything you do. That's true. Everything you do, you'll be able to figure out more ways to do things faster, to be able to, to, to save more time, to save more money at home, to do all these different things, just the more smarts that you have and the more wisdom that you have. Let alone all of the really important wisdom of just trying to live a life free of sin as much as possible, right? I mean, there's, there's that wisdom too, which is going to go a huge, a long way into, um, into the, the joyfulness and peacefulness of your own life. Verse number 27, She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. There is no time to be idle and to sit around and do nothing. It's a hard job, but there's no time to just 
uh, whatever, I'm going to sit on the couch and eat bonbons and, and whatever, right? Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. The children are going to respect their mom when they see, one, the hard work that she's doing, right? Being that good example. You know, when anyone, when anyone sees that, 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 that work that you do, it, it, it's going to warrant respect with virtually everyone. I mean, it, I know on the job, as a hard worker, people will respect you because you're a hard worker. Even the people that slack off and don't do a good job, they'll still respect you for being that hard worker. You earn that respect by showing how well you work. At home, it's not always just by working, though, because kids don't always appreciate the hard work. So it's not just um, the hard work that they need to see. They do need to see that. But they also need to be taught and trained and disciplined properly as well. So with the virtuous woman having her children rise up and call her blessed means they're respecting her and appreciating her. But that also means that mom needs to be doling out the proper discipline at home with the children as well. That shouldn't just be dad's job. It's both. And honestly, the, the, the mom should be spending more time with the children than the dad anyways. If dad's off working and mom is keeping the house that they need to be disciplined by her. And I'll tell you what, when you discipline your children, they'll respect you. They do. They'll listen to you. It's the biblical way and it works. And even though there is a lot of work to be done around the house, the children still need to be taught and trained. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And it says there to train up a child. Training is a lot of work. And this is completely separate from all the cleaning and housekeeping and everything else that needs to be done. Okay, when you start training a child, I mean, just think about physical training, right? If you've done some physical fitness, physical training, it's a, a consistency. You need to be at it, you know, every day or at least multiple days a week. You need to just be on it consistently if you're going to improve and you can continue to train. It's a lot of effort. You got to keep at it. And children are the same exact way. You can't just give them one lesson and be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's done. It needs to be consistent every day in training them. Um, look at the beginning of Proverbs 31 because the children need to learn. Look, I believe academics are important. We, we homeschool our children. They learn reading, writing, arithmetic, right? Where they learn science, they learn all kinds of different subjects. Because as I mentioned before, you know, boy or girl, they need to have intelligence. I want them to be smart. I want them to have good knowledge and understanding. And you need to take the time to teach them that stuff. They don't just learn it all on their own. Teach them. Care about them enough to teach them that. And you know, honestly, they're more important than the rest of the, of the other work that needs to be done at home. And that's the priority. When, when I was at home and, and taking care of everything, the priority was making sure that the kids' school got done. And I would, you know, I tried to get other things done, but that would come, the cleaning and other things would come later in the day. And that's how I noticed, like, man, this, just the teaching is a lot of work. So when I come home from work, I don't know what, what all has been done. And, and a lot of the teaching depends on how the child is responding to the teaching because it's not always easy and there's other distractions that come up there's other things that can come up but the children need to learn and it's not just the academics though even though you know you could have a whole curriculum which we do you know all these different things they also need to know and learn life knowledge from the bible they need to be taught just just great truths that are going to help them as people to grow up and, and to live for God and to live righteously, not just have the smarts that, that academics will teach you, but be able to live a prosperous life in the eyes of the Lord and a blessed life because they have wisdom and you're going to keep them from falling into trap. Uh, look at verse number one of Proverbs 31. This also falls unto, into the, the virtuous woman teaching her child, right? 
Verse number one, the Bible says the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. So his mother is teaching him Bible, wisdom, knowledge, instruction that he's kept with him into his adulthood. Verse two says, what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows, give not thy strength unto women nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. And I love this passage because he says, look, these are the words of King Lemuel. So King Lemuel, hear his words, but what's he repeating? He's literally repeating what his mother was teaching him because he's saying it's not for kings, O Lemuel, like he's talking to himself, but that's because his mother taught him this. And he's repeating back because he's learned what she was saying to him. Lemuel, as a boy, you know, it's not for kings, O Lemuel. It's not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. This isn't for you, son. You've got a great future ahead of you. You're going to be somebody. You're not going to be some drug addict drunk in the gutter who's ruined their life and lives in misery and sorrow. No, you're going to be something different. You're going to be something better. And here's the thing. Don't get into the strong drink. Don't get into the booze, the alcohol. It's going to ruin and destroy your life. It's not for kings, Lemuel. So lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that's ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth, and then it continues on after the, the alcohol teaching. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So there's just a sampling of the instruction also that's being given by the virtuous woman at home to her children. This goes above and beyond the lesson plan for the academics. Make sure that this is a part of the teaching for your children as well. It's easy to just say, okay, here's my schedule. We've got this whole program. We bought it. It's a lesson plan, everything. It's nice. It's, it's nice to have that stuff already built out. But don't forget this wisdom. Amen. That's right. and teaching your children wisdom like this. Amen. It's so important for them. There's so many things I'm thankful that I learned from my parents when I was younger. But there's also so many things I wish I would have learned yeah. from them when I was younger, too. And, you know, I don't want to be critical of my own parents. I, I you know, appreciate everything they've done for me. But at the same time, I didn't have a formalized you know, daily Bible school or understanding and teaching and things like that. I just picked up things along the way. I, who knows how, I don't know how, however you learn things at home. But it wasn't anything that was very well structured. Um, your children also need to learn how to interact with other people. You know, when you when you're if you're homeschooling and 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 training them up at home, however you teach them at home and whatever you allow them to get away with at home, they're going to feel like they can do the same thing out in public. So make sure you you're keeping your children, you know, learning manners and being respectful and not just being so sloppy about it and going, well, we're at home, who cares anyways? No. If they're not, if not able to do it even at home, then how are you going to expect them to be able to do it outside of the home? They need to be taught and trained in repetition over and over and over again. This is how we do things. You're going to sit down, you're going to sit still, we're, gonna, you know, we're all going to sit together as a family. No, we're not going to go you know, off in front of the TV and this and that. We're going to sit down, we're going to eat, you're going to ask politely, you're going to say please, thank you, whatever, you know, all the things that you should expect for your own children to be upright people in this world. And it, and it takes time and it takes effort. And the easy way is just say, well, forget it. I don't care. I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this anymore. That's not the right way. They need to be taught behavior that matches the principles taught in the Bible. Right? And again, I, look, I understand this because you may have a lot of things that you need to get done at home. You have a lot of jobs to do. And I'm a big proponent of sending the kids out to play. Right? They, I think they ought to be outside getting some sunlight, getting some activity, burning up their energy and everything else. But at the same time, 
you need to be able to deal with the problems that arise with the children appropriately as well and not just kind of forget about them and ignore them. And, you know, what I mean by that is, is just there's certain things that they learn among themselves that aren't always good things. And I know there's a big difference between boys and girls. And my boys are still pretty young, but boys have a tendency to be more physical, right? And a lot, a lot easier for them to start getting into fights and stuff. But you got to realize, you know, I know that among kids, fights happen. But we don't promote fighting at home. I discipline fighting. There should be no, you know, none of this hitting back and forth. That is not a biblical thing that, that people just get into fights. You know, the Bible says that, that a bishop is not supposed to be a striker. But it's not just for a bishop. I mean, that's for everybody. That's just something that's like, hey, if you're a striker, you can't be this. But we should all strive to, to meet whatever qualifications there are in Scripture of someone who's being held to a higher standard. So, you know, the children need to be punished appropriately. It can't just be let, let's let loose and run wild. And the hard part about that is when you've got a bunch of other things going on. But set your priorities right to say, okay, well, the children are way more important than cleaning the oven is. So make sure you deal with the most important things first and that they at least have the priority so when something comes up, I don't care if you're in the middle of doing the dishes, if someone needs to be corrected, correct them so that they can, you know, because they're way more important in how they turn out. And those little things, it's easy to blow it off and say, well, normally I correct them, but I'm not going to do it this time. Watch out for that because what that does is it starts to build a habit in your mind and you're just going to start saying, oh, well, I didn't do it last time. I'm gonna, well, I, don't really, I definitely don't have the time to do it this time. And when you start just making those allowances, before you know it, it just become a habit and a routine for you not to do anything about it. Last point I want to make, turn if you would to Job 39. And these are, these are all things, none of them were really like just some new thing that I've learned, like just some brand new thing I didn't know already. But they became abundantly clear when I spent the time at home. So th these are just kind of a small list of things that, that were, I was chewing on and thinking about as I was doing all this work, right? And again, it gives me a much more, a much bigger appreciation for my wife. I'm not bringing these things up like, She's filling this area. I'm just thinking like, man, there's all this work going on. It's a hard job. I needed to keep track of what I need to do and what's most important so that I'm trying not to let anything fall through the cracks, but still maintaining the, uh, the proper focus at home. And in Job 39, it describes here the ostrich. And what you definitely don't want to do is be an ostrich type of a parent. Job 39, verse 13, the Bible reads, Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 14, Which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in the dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. So this is bringing up, you know, the ostrich, real animal, who does these things, that they lay eggs, and then they just... Oh, I'm going to warm my eggs. You know, most birds, they'll sit on their eggs, they keep them warm, and they stay close to them, and they care for them, and, they, and they'll protect them and everything else. You ever go by a bird's nest, and the bird starts, you, know, you don't even realize there's like a bird's nest in a bush or in a tree or something, and then the birds start like swooping down to attack you because they're protecting their nest and they're protecting their eggs. What the Bible's teaching here is that, you know, the ostrich, they just put some dust over their, their eggs and say, okay, well, that's going to keep them warm. They're not going to, and I know ostriches do sit on their eggs, but, but the, the point is, is that they'll also just leave their eggs and just leave them in the earth and warm them with the dust, and then they just forget that the foot may crush them. Like, they're not really well protected at all, and they'll just go off and just leave them unattended. And you can't have this type of an attitude towards your young, towards your children, 
of just being able to say, well, yeah, whatever, I'm just going to leave them off. They can just go roam the streets or go wherever, you know, especially in today's day. I mean, as the, the love of many is waxing cold and as the, the days are becoming darker spiritually, and I mean, you see more and more wickedness and more and more people becoming perverts and just, you know, the reprobates, I think, are, are increasing more than they have. They've always been around. But they, they've, you know, things have been getting worse and worse. And the things that even I used to do as a child, I would never let my kids do them this way because there's more danger involved now. It's just more perilous times. And we need to remember, hey, look, I mean, I love, I love our kids. I want to be like the ostrich that just doesn't really care that much. For them. Oh, yeah, okay, they'll just be fine. Throw them out there. You got to look out for them and protect them. And don't forget that the foot may crush them, right? Like here, that someone else might come along and, and break them and, and hurt them and injure them. Verse 16 talks about the officer. says she is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. So basically, the Bible is saying, teaching that, you know, the ostrich doesn't have any wisdom at all because she's just leaving her young and leaving her eggs out to the elements to just say, well, whatever happens, happens to the point where she's even hardened against them, like doesn't care. She has no wisdom. You don't be the ostrich parent. <laughs> they should be, and this should go without having to teach it, but it's in the Bible for a reason. Because there are people out there that are hardened against their young ones and they just kind of let them run free and just do whatever. And they need to be restrained. They need to be limited in, so, in varying degrees, you know, especially depending on their age and, and their um, susceptibility to danger and things like that. You need to keep all of that in account and watch out for them and protect them. And I know it's easier when they're just gone. It is. If you've got a lot of work to do at home, it's easier when they're just out of your hair. I'm not saying not to send them out to play. They ought to. But don't forget where the priority lies. Why are you even doing all the work that you're doing in the house? It's for people. It's not for things. It's not keeping a clean house just for the sake of having a clean house. It's for other people to live in and to, and to be, live healthily and... and you know, to, to have things in order and to be, have things efficient and, and in place, you know. But it's for the people that are living there. So don't get so focused on the work that you forget about who you're working for. And one of the things I love about God's design, everybody's working for other people. Everyone should be working for other people in a family. The husband goes off, he's working. Yeah, he's working for himself, but he's working for the family. Right. You're working to provide and bring home money for, for your whole family to be supported. The wife, she's working, yeah, somewhat for herself, but she's working for her children. She's working for her husband. She's working to keep things at home for other people. And even the children, you know, as they're growing up, they need to learn. And for, for people who have increasingly, you know, bigger families, that is the perfect, there's a necessity laid on you because one person can't do it all. Like, there is no way that I can do all of the work for my family all by myself. And my wife can't do it either, which is why the children, out of necessity, need to learn how to start doing chores at home. And I'm glad that it is that way because it's good for them to learn, to work, and to serve, and to do their chores and to get things done because they can learn and pick up skills from an early age and it's going to make them better people. When you give kids everything, they're going to turn out to be spoiled, rotten brats. Which is another reason why it's good not to have tons of wealth. Because when you have tons of wealth, it's easy just to pay for everything and you can have all of your servants and everything being done and you're not doing as much work and then your children as a result aren't going to be doing as much work but the work is good for them the work is good for them there's the desire to want to do and provide everything for your children 
but don't keep them from learning their own and learning and building their own character and doing their own work at home. It's important for them. There's a lot more skills that I wish I had learned when I was younger too. Because my, my, again, I love my parents and they did everything they could for me and they, they worked their tails off for their kids. And I respect that and appreciate that. And that, you know, I was on the receiving end of a lot of goodness, but I feel like I got off kind of easy. Because <laughs> there's a lot of things I didn't have to do. And sure, it was great when I was younger, and look, and again, don't take this the wrong way because I really don't like saying anything negative at all about my parents. But I just think, you know, we all kind of have to think about your own upbringing experiences and how are you going to try to improve upon that and identify the things that were good and separate from the things that maybe could have been a little bit better. I wish I could have learned more things. They taught me a lot. But how much more would it be valuable if I learned even more skills, right? And don't deprive that of your children. Get them involved. And you know what? Don't get caught up in the trap of going, well, I could do this a lot faster. I'll just do it all myself because I could just do this a lot faster. I could do this a lot faster. I could do and you're taking on all the jobs. You can't do it all. If you're going to be able to accomplish everything that the virtuous woman is accomplishing, you're going to need to learn as your family grows to delegate responsibilities. Okay, here's your job, son. Here's your job, daughter. Here's what you have to do. Because as the people grow, the workload grows tremendously. So those are some of the things that, that you know, again, they're not all brand new or something, but it just, it hit home for me. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed the time. I, I mean, I love it. I love being with my family. I love being able to get my hands in on, on the, the teaching and, and do more of that. But honestly, I'm not the one who's best equipped to deal with that. God has made that decision and he's made my wife more, is better equipped to deal with everything at home than I am. But you know what? It gives me a lot more of an appreciation and probably a lot more likelihood to do even, try to do even more at home when I get off of work to just make sure that things are done because it is a hard job. You know, I, I'm lucky with my nine to five job or whatever, right? The, the, the shorter shift. I don't have a 12 hour day, but you know, the virtuous woman has a 12 hour day, easy. If you're getting up before dawn and staying up into the evening, it's a long day. So show honor under the weaker vessel and compassion and, and ladies, it's a lot of work. Don't, uh, don't take it for granted, especially when you have children. Okay, and I know not everyone's in the same boat, but you know what? One day, maybe, or hopefully you will be in, in that situation where you have children and stuff. So take these lessons to heart now. Um, there's a lot of people I know that, that probably already have, end up you know, having grown children. And it's like, man, I wish I would have really thought about this and really taken the time and heard the instruction and the teaching because too often times we go through life and you don't things you just don't even occur to you and you don't think about it. you would have done had someone just brought it up it's like oh yeah i would have done that if i would have just known well this is what we went over tonight so uh keep it in mind keep the biblical truths in mind proverbs 31 awesome passage i encourage ladies you know Keep that in your heart to help you, to motivate you and guide you into doing the best job that you can do to keep the home. And men, you know, keep that in mind as well for your wives, you know, husbands for your wives to, um, to remember how hard the job actually is and how much work there is that they're, they're putting in that you might not be seeing visibly while you're gone, but that is being done um, outside of your sight. Let's bow our heads, have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for all the great truth and wisdom that you provide for us through your word, as well as even just through experience, dear God. Pray that you please help us to become better husbands and wives at home and to be able to um, just do all of the work that, that is under our responsibility, Lord. And I pray that you would just, just help us to have stronger families and biblical families, dear Lord, that are doing things the way that you've designed 
Increase our wisdom and our understanding, dear Lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.